Here is the recap of the first and second season of Invincible. The world of this cartoon is very similar to ours, except that it is full of people with superpowers. These can be mutants, aliens, creatures from another universe, people in super suits and so on. Of course, there are individuals who decided to use their powers for selfish purposes, but there are also heroes who want to help humanity. These heroes are divided into leagues. The strongest call themselves the Guardians of the Globe, who eliminate serious threats. But there are also smaller leagues with weaker characters. Their activities are trying to control the government organization Global Defense Agency, which is led by Cecil Stedman, and his right hand is an agent named Donald. The main character of this world is Mark Grayson, whose father is the strongest superhero on Earth named Omniman. Omniman appeared here many years ago from the very advanced planet of Viltrum and told everyone the following story. His civilization has reached such an advanced stage that they have decided to help less developed worlds and each Viltrumite, upon reaching a certain age, chooses a solar system and protects it from all sorts of threats. Also, each Viltrumite is incredibly strong, can fly, lives for several hundred years and is almost indestructible. After flying to Earth, Omniman falls in love with a girl named Debbie and they have a son named Mark. Until the age of 18, he didn't have any powers, but after growing up, he has the same powers as his father. The boy decides to follow in the footsteps of his ancestors, becomes a superhero and chooses the pseudonym Invincible. At school, Mark meets a girl named Amber and soon they start a romance. But because the guy spends a lot of time saving lives, he is constantly late for dates and lies to Amber, which makes her incredibly angry. Meanwhile, Invincible is trying to be a hero in his town and his father takes him to Art Rosenbaum to make him a superhero costume. Suddenly, those guardians of the globe are urgently called to their headquarter. But it turns out to be a trap and there they are waiting for Omniman, who cruelly kills each hero. And then from the injuries, he loses consciousness. The Global Defense Agency arrives and tries to figure out what happened here. But they can't prove that Omniman is to blame, so they take him to a special hospital and start investigating. Meanwhile, creatures from a parallel universe called Flaxlands are attacking the Earth. And since the Guardians of the Globe are no longer there, they are trying to be stopped by the Youth Superhero League, which includes Atomic Eve, who can manipulate matter and energy. Duplicate, able to create copies of herself. Rex empowers objects with energy that explode when thrown. And then there's the robot, his story I'll tell later. Invincible joins them, but the Flaxans outnumber them. However, the villains suddenly start to age and retreat into their portals. It turns out that time flows completely differently in their universe, and they just can't exist in our world. Soon they do attack again, as many years have passed during their time away from their planet, and they have found a way to not age on Earth. The weak superheroes are unable to stand up to them. Omniman flies into a portal single-handedly, almost completely destroys the Flaxan civilization, and then returns home. After all, this mess Cecil wants to test the Invincible for loyalty to people and also to see what the guy is capable of and asks him to go into space, as there is a certain object looming on the planet. It turns out to be an alien named Alan, who tells Mark about the existence of the Coalition of Planets, created to protect worlds from the threat of galactic scale. Demon Detective Damien Darkblood begins to investigate the deaths of the Guardians of the Globe, and suspects that the Omnimine are to blame. He finds no hard evidence of this, but plants a seed of doubt in his wife. After a while, the agency decides that Darkblood is on the side of evil and Cecil, along with Donald, send him back to hell. The Global Defense Agency decides to gather new guardians of the globe and assigns Robot to find such superheroes. After a while, he takes Rex and Duplicate from the Youth League there, as well as three new characters. Monster Girl, who turns into a monster but gets younger with each transformation. Shrinking Ray, who has the ability to shrink in size. And Black Samson, a hero who has lost his superpowers but has a special suit that gives him advantages. Atomic Eve refused to participate because her boyfriend Rex cheated on her and she decided to become a lone hero. The girl also gets close to Invincible. They become friends and fight villains together several times. Soon Eve runs away from home settles in the forest and, with the her powers, helps ordinary people. Cecil asks Mark for help again. Humanity sends a mission to Mars, 
But the public doesn't know that there are actually Martians living on this planet and the task of the Invincible is to secretly protect the astronauts without being seen. Arriving at the place on the research group is attacked by locals and want to kill them. As on the planet, there is a kind of creatures called Sickfits, which, having come into contact with people, acquire intelligence and become incredibly dangerous. Mark saves almost all the astronauts, and as I understand, the one infected left on Mars destroys the Martian civilization. A certain man with superpowers nicknamed Titan works for a local criminal genius, Machine Head, as he threatens to kill Titan's daughter. He contacts Invincible and asks for his help in destroying the villain. Mark agrees, but upon arriving they are met by several supervillains who nearly kill the protagonist. Omniman is watching his son all this time and wants to teach him a lesson, which is that Invincible should not be distracted by all sorts of small things but save humanity from more serious disasters. However, seeing that Mark is in danger, he calls the new Guardians of the Globe, who rescue the hero. Tok, the strongest of the supervillains, easily defeats all the new arrivals and leaves the battlefield, saying that he is ashamed to fight with them. After that, the heroes get up again and defeat the remaining opponents. After a while, Titan takes the place of Machine Head and becomes the new head of the underworld. Also after this mess, Black Samson regains his lost superpowers and Robot falls in love with the girl monster. Meanwhile, Robot helps two supervillains, the Mauler twins who have mastered cloning themselves and are generally quite advanced in science, escape from a special prison. The Robot gets Rex's DNA and asks them to create a clone of him. After a while, he shows up at the twins and we learn that all this time, the Robot is just a controlled drone and this creature is controlling him. The twins copy his consciousness into a clone of young Rex, and the original dies in his arms. After that, Robot tries to arrest the twins as they are criminals, but he fails and the villains manage to escape. They decide to take revenge on him by digging up the corpse of the immortal. The former Guardians of the Globe, who was killed by Omniman, and try to resurrect him by attaching a mind control mechanism to him. Eventually, the mind control fails, and the twins are arrested by the agency. Mark's best friend, William, calls him and Amber to another city for a field trip. Coincidentally, at the same time, a local mad scientist is experimenting on students and making them very strong cyborgs capable of competing in strength with the Invincible. The hero manages to deal with them, and the mad scientist is taken away by the Global Defense Agency. William and Amber also learn that Mark is a superhero, but Amber breaks up with him Debbie finds Omniman's torn clothes, which he hid after the battle with the Guardians of the Globe, and takes them to Art Rosenbaum for analysis. He confirms the woman's speculation that her husband killed the defenders and attacked them first. Debbie confronts Omniman with this, but he simply walks away. The Global Defense Agency hides the woman as they realize that the conflict with Omniman cannot be avoided and hope that the Invincible will be able to cope with it. Upon returning home, Omniman fails to find his wife and discovers that his house is being watched by the agency. He kills everyone, including Donald, and goes in search of his son to tell him the whole truth. Cecil tries his best to stop him throwing missiles, orbital lasers, and the cyborgs that the mad scientist built for the agency. But Omniman can't be stopped. Soon the agency sends a huge reinforced monster at him, and also the immortal arrives at the party, who was revived by the twins and could not be controlled. But Aminamon again kills the hero and deals with the monster. Upon meeting Mark, his father tells him the true story. The Viltrumites are indeed a very advanced civilization, but all is not so bright on their planet. To become so powerful, they have spent years exterminating the weak on their homeworld and leaving only the strongest. The Viltrumites decided to conquer all the other worlds and their empire only grew. But as the size of Emeria grew, it became more and more difficult for them to conquer new worlds as the army was scattered. So they found a new strategy. They sent one of their own to the planets they wanted to capture, and under the guise of a hero, he was supposed to weaken the defense of the planet, and eventually, when the Viltrumite army arrived, the population would be unable to resist. Omniman's own task was just that. He asks his son to join him, but Mark refuses and takes the side of Earth. After a short battle in which a great number of innocent people die, the villain defeats the Invincible, but does not kill him and leaves the planet, which no Viltrumite has ever done before. After a while, 
Mark comes to his senses and Cecil tells the guy that they heard the whole conversation with his father with the help of special drones tracking them. The director of the agency informs the hero that Omniman has apparently gone somewhere far away and will not return soon. So humanity will have to prepare for the invasion of Viltrumites and Invincible will have to become stronger. This is the end of the first season. After what happened in the previous season, Mark Grayson is depressed. The guy wants to help humanity, but Cecil thinks he's not ready to join the big leagues yet. Meanwhile, we are shown an alternate Earth from another universe. There, Mark sided with his father and enslaved the Earth with him. Of course, there is resistance, but the couple systematically exterminates them. One day, Invincible and Omni-Man get to their base and destroy the remnants of the superheroes of the Earth, but suddenly one of the rebels teleports somewhere. Turns out scientist Angstrom has the ability to travel across universes. His world was also destroyed by the Omniman, and now he wants revenge. To do this, he assembles his own copies from other worlds. The man then helps the Mauler twins in our universe escape and asks for a facility that will merge the minds of all his copies. Cecil learns of some strange activity and sends Mark there. Arriving at the place, the guy does not understand what is happening and accidentally destroys the installation. As everyone thought, there was no one left alive, except the Invincible. However, the Maulers and the main Angstrom managed to survive. Now the mutated scientist, who has hundreds of consciousnesses in his head, wants revenge not only on his Omni-Man, but also on our Mark Grayson. Mark, his girlfriend Amber, and best friend William enroll in the same university. However, due to constant missions, Invincible misses classes time after time and spends less and less time with Amber. In one of his forays, he goes to a cursed city where he fights a crazy superhero, then dives to the bottom of the ocean where he saves the underwater people from a huge monster. In doing so, Cecil notices that Invincible got sick from the monster's scream and he orders scientists to research it to create a weapon against the Viltrumites. One day aliens come to Mark and persuade him to fly to their planet to save them from an upcoming catastrophe. Invincible agrees, but when he gets there, he sees Omniman. The guy has mixed feelings, as on the one hand he can't forgive him for what he did, and on the other hand, Mark missed his father incredibly. Omniman reports that he regrets what he has done, but nothing can be returned. It turns out that the man has been wandering through space for a long time and even decided to end his life, but accidentally noticed the aliens crashing. He saved them, and arriving on this planet fell in love with a local resident. Mark learns that he now has a brother, who because of genetic features grows very fast. Suddenly the planet is attacked by the Viltrumites and Omniman asks his son to help protect the local people, as well as his brother. However, during the battle the main characters are defeated. Omniman is imprisoned and soon he is to be executed. Meanwhile, General Craig orders Mark to return to Earth and prepare his planet for the invasion of the Viltrumites. If he doesn't, millions of people will suffer. Mark recovers for two months and then returns to Earth with his brother. Cecil sees that Robot is failing in his task of leading the Guardians of the Globe, so he puts Immortal in charge and also puts a new member named Bulletproof to them. We learn that after the astronauts returned from an unsuccessful mission to Mars in the previous season, a Martian came with them. He has the ability to take on any appearance and change his body at will. Soon Shapesmith joins the ranks of the Guardians of the Globe and believes that no one noticed that he is an alien, but it turns out that everyone has long guessed. Suddenly it turns out that a huge ship is coming from Mars, so Cecil asks Shifter what he knows about it. The alien tells him that if the cichwids have taken over the human brain, they have become just as intelligent as they are one mind. Now they are most likely flying to Earth to take over all humans. Cecil sends several guardians, as well as Invincible and Atomic Eve, to intercept the ship. Eventually, the heroes manage to disconnect Sequid from the astronaut that started all the trouble, after which the main characters return to Earth. However, we see that one monster has snuck onto the planet and has recaptured the consciousness of a human being. Immortal decides to leave his post after Duplicate's death, since he loved her. But at the end of the season, we learn that the girl is alive. She's just tired of her copies dying countless times. While the rest of the Guardians of the Globe were in space, Cecil sends Rex, Duplicate and Ray on a mission, but the forces are unequal. Duplicate is killed, Ray is on the brink of death, and Rex gets his arm chopped off and shot in the head. 
From the last forces, he manages to defeat the villains. However, he survives. The guy realizes that he was an asshole and is now ready to change. Also, we see that Donald is not dead and soon he begins to guess that something is wrong here. The man finds a tape of him dying at the hands of the Omniman and learns that he is a cyborg. Cecil tells him that Donald has died many times, saving people and each time he was restored, while erasing his memory. And this is what Donald himself wanted. At first the man was concerned but eventually accepted his fate and forbade further erasure of his memory. Meanwhile, Mark's mother begins to take care of his brother, whom he brought from outer space. She names him Oliver and hires a babysitter who admits to working for Cecil. In parallel, we are also told the story of Monster Girl and Robot. The guy is in love with her, but because of his inability to communicate, their relationship doesn't mesh. However, at the end of the season, the guys find a common language and Robot promises to create a technology that will help the girl not to grow younger with each transformation into a monster. Mark remembers that before the Wiltrumites took his father away, Omniman told him that he could find answers in his books, but his mother threw them away. Mark goes to Rosenbaum's to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk, and it turns out that the old man still has Omniman's books. Invincible reads them and realizes that they describe things and creatures that could, in theory, help fight the Viltrumites, like a racer with a weapon capable of destroying any matter, or monsters on a distant planet that can easily handle the Viltrumites. We are shown the past of the planet Unopa. The locals were enslaved by the Viltrumites, but some managed to escape and soon joined a coalition of planets that opposed the Viltrumites. The Anopians began genetic experiments and soon created Alan, a mutant capable of defeating the villains. However, it turns out that he is still weaker than any Viltrumite. Soon he is attacked by three of them and mortally wounded. He is rescued by the coalition, but their leader Thadis disables his life support machine. Alan surprisingly survives and even becomes several times stronger. Fadus reveals that he did this intentionally as he was sure Alan would evolve. He also reveals that he is a Viltrumite who has rebelled against his own people in the past. Upon hearing of Mark Grayson from Earth, the man has hoped that they can handle the enemy. So Fadus sends Alan back to the Invincible with an offer to join the Coalition. Alan reaches Earth and asks Mark to join them, but he cannot leave Earth when it is constantly threatened by various dangers. However, Invincible tells the alien about his father's books and things that can harm the Viltrumites, after which Alan takes off. On his way, he comes across a Viltrumite ship where he is attacked by one of them. It turns out that Alan has become much stronger and may even be able to defeat his enemies. But to get more information, he intentionally pretends to lose the fight, so he is taken prisoner. There, Alan meets Omni-Man and offers to run away together, as he realizes that the man has repented of his actions and wants to confront the Viltrumites. Amber and Mark are on a date when a Viltrumite named Anissa suddenly appears. She threatens Invincible that she will kill the girl if he starts to resist. Anissa just wants to talk and sets up a meeting with him. Soon she asks Mark if he is willing to take over his father's responsibility and help enslave the Earth. Mark refuses and Anissa beats him severely. Afterward, she warns him. The next time they come to check on him, they will kill millions of people if he doesn't obey. After a while, Amber breaks up with Mark as she realizes they are on completely different levels. The mutant scientist Angstrom from the beginning of the season finally decides to act. He takes Mark's family hostage and plans to kill the hero himself. The man wears out Invincible by throwing him from one dimension to another. When the exhausted boy returns to his home, he sees that Angstrom has beaten his mother. Mark goes berserk and starts beating the scientist. They are transported to some abandoned world where the hero kills Angstrom. Invincible is shocked that he killed the man. He thinks he won't be able to return, but suddenly a portal opens and the guardians of the globe appear from it. They are from the future of his world and create a portal for Mark, but before leaving Atomic Eve confesses that she has always loved him. Invincible returns home. He decides to drop out of college and become not only stronger, but learn to control himself if he wants to be better than his father. This is the end of the second season. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the like button. Thanks for watching, goodbye.